Join me tonight as I use my astrophotography rig to go supernova hunting in the pinwheel galaxy. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. You've probably seen it in the news or followed it in social media, but there's a big event happening now around M101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy. I say happening now, but this event actually took place millions and millions of years ago, but due to the vast distances in space, we're only capturing a glimpse of this epic cosmic explosion now. It's a huge supernova and it's been dubbed SN2023 IXF, but I'll just call it the Pinwheel Galaxy Supernova for this video. Scientists have discovered that this particular supernova is a Type 2, which happens when a massive star runs out of its nuclear fuel and collapses. The star then explodes and we can see the results in increasingly bright light in the night sky through our telescopes. Tonight I'm going to try and capture it from my backyard here in Scotland with a Newtonian telescope and a dedicated astrophotography camera. We'll have some challenges along the way and it's not ideal to shoot from my location at this time of year, but we astrophotographers don't shy away from a challenge now, do we? I've actually shot the Pinwheel Galaxy a few times and it's good to have these previous images as I can pair tonight's image with an earlier one so we can get a better understanding of how bright this supernova actually is. I'll share my results at the end of the video, so stick around and see what I managed to get. So where exactly is it located in the night sky? Well luckily for us up here in the northern hemisphere, the pinwheel is located in Ursa Major, which is a circumpolar constellation and means it's always above the horizon for us to see. The pinwheel sits near to the last two major stars in the handle of the Big Dipper known as Alcade and Mizar. It's quite easy to locate with the telescope and camera combo that I'm using tonight, so we should get a nice view of it. It's likely that the supernova will be visible over the next few weeks, and maybe longer, so if you get the chance, have a look up towards the Big Dipper with your telescope and see if you can find it. Let's have a look now at the gear I'll be using to try and hunt down this stellar explosion. Tonight I'll be imaging with my Skywatcher 130 PDS Newtonian reflector, and its focal length is 650mm, should give me a nice punched in view of the pinwheel galaxy. I recently did an overview of the scope, and I'll link to it above, so you can go check that out after you watch this video. My camera of choice tonight is the excellent ZWO 533MC Pro, which is a one-shot colour dedicated astro camera. To help boost the clarity of my images due to the prevailing sky conditions, I'll also use a light pollution filter. I love using my little IDAS LPS D2, it's been a great performer for me over the years. To keep my mount steady and locked onto my target as I track it through the night sky, I'll use a small guide scope and guide camera. Tonight I'm using the 50mm scope from Astro Essentials and a ZWO 290MC Pro. I'll keep my stars as focused and pinpoint as possible with my wee ZWO electronic autofocuser and all of this gear will be controlled through my iPad with the wonderful ASI Air Pro. My equipment will be riding on my trusty Skywatcher AZ EQ6 GT Pro mount and the sturdy Ioptron Tripeer. These two are really a match made in heaven and provide strength and stability to help maximise the quality of my astro images. If you want to follow along with all my astrophotography adventures from here in the UK and learn more about the gear that I use, then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support. Right, let's head out now so we can get set up. One of the main issues of imaging at this time of year in Scotland is the lack of astronomical darkness. Is this a foolhardy venture? Probably. Am I going to do it anyway? Yes, I am. I'm only really after a peak of the supernova tonight, so if I get any image of the pinwheel galaxy, I'll be happy. As we're all set up now, we'll wait for any type of darkness we can get, we'll get the rig polar aligned, and then we'll start our imaging run. As the sun set below the horizon, I could feel the anticipation building, and I was hoping that even with the less than ideal conditions, I'd be able to capture at least something that would give me a glimpse of this cosmic event. You can never tell how an imaging session is going to go, and as we astrophotographers know, there's a whole lot that can go wrong over the course of a night. I had to wait till after 11 o'clock to start my imaging run, and even then the sky wasn't totally dark, but the wind had died down and it was totally calm, so I decided to go for it. First thing I'm doing is running an autofocus routine here so we can get some nice sharp stars across our image, and then we'll get to polar aligning. ZWEF is really good at this, it's a real massive time saver, so right, we're going to start a polar alignment routine now, uh, nice and easy with a ASI air here, so again everything's done pretty much automatically. Just follow the on-screen prompts and then we'll be good to go. So this reticule here shows us how far off we are on the uh, polar alignment, so the little green circle in the middle is the one we're trying to get the yellow circle to, so we just have to mess with the altitude and azimuth bolts <coughs> of the rig here until we get it as close as we can. And you can see there's a kind of nonchalant face on the top right of the the screen so once we've got everything polar aligned it'll turn to a happy face so our main aim is to get the happy face here so let's let's go and have a go at this okay that's good enough so i'll lock everything down and then we'll give it another run make sure that everything's still centered we're still getting the happy face after a couple of refreshes 
that's good. It's moved even closer there. Right, we're polar aligned and guiding's looking good, so let's see if we can spy that supernova. It's always exciting to catch your first glimpse of your target as it comes up on the screen, but it's even more special tonight. Here it comes. Wow! Can you see the bright spot here? That's the supernova. We did it! We'll get a clear view once we stack all of our images together, and I'll get it edited, but you can see the final results at the end of the video. As I ended my imaging run and started to take my calibration frames, I took a pause to process the enormity of capturing a supernova in a galaxy that lies over 20 million light years from our wee planet. Sure, there's now images of it spread all over the news and social media, but this was my image that I took in my backyard with my equipment. As amateur astrophotographers, we're so lucky to have the tools available to image truly epic stellar events and share them with the world. I think our hobby's the coolest there is. So get out there and keep imaging, folks. Clear skies to you all.